Hey everybody, Andre here at the Coaches Hangout, a spot where our students can come and leave their requests, knowing this is where our study coaches hang out, virtually of course, and we'll often leave some helpful content. It takes a very gifted student to simply be able to read a textbook and expect to pass an exam. For most students, a successful result requires them to practice first, and you'll see what I mean if you take a look at the question that you now see on the screen. All else being equal, if the required rate of return were to increase, how would it impact the intrinsic value of the stock? Now, this question is even more challenging because I promise you, you will not find a line in the textbook that specifically says, if the required rate of return increases, you would expect the intrinsic value of the stock to fall, all else being equal. Instead, in order to answer this question right, you need to know which formula to use. You're gonna use the dividend discount model. And then you need to understand how one change in a variable would impact the intrinsic value of the stock. Now, if I were to ask you, you know, why would you buy a share in a company? I and mean, why would you buy a common share? Your response may be something like this. Well, you know, if you're looking for income, maybe you're hoping to receive an annual dividend and you're hoping that dividend increases with time and that overall your return adequately compensates you for the level of risk that you're assuming. And if you look on the screen now, you'll see the dividend discount model, which is div one, which stands for dividend one year from now, over R, which is the required rate of return, minus G, which is the growth rate. Now, I want to pay attention to this formula because if you're asked to calculate the intrinsic value of the stock, um, the div one piece often confuses students and, and that's where they go wrong. Remember, you need the dividend one year from now. So you got to pay very special attention to the wording in the question. I mean, if they say today's dividend is a dollar, for example, well, then you're going to have to increase it by the growth rate to find out what it will be a year from now. But if on the other hand, they say, you know, the dividend will be, let's say a dollar five, it's as though they're talking about next year, well, then you wouldn't have to increase it. So this is something you want to be aware of and pay special attention to on the exam. Now, with all this in mind, let's circle back and tackle that challenging question we looked at at the top of this video. Okay, the easiest way to tackle this question is simply to make up some numbers, calculate the intrinsic value, and then increase the required rate of return and calculate it again to see how it would impact the answer. So let's assume that today's dividend is a dollar. It's expected to grow by 2% per year and the required rate of return for an investment of this risk level is 6%. Well, let's start with the dividend one year from now. If it's a dollar today and we expect it to grow by 2%, next year it will be a dollar two. So we divide a dollar two into 4%, which is the required rate of return is 6% minus the 2% growth rate. And if we calculate that all out, we get an intrinsic value of $25.50. Okay, now let's do what the question suggests and increase the required rate of return to say 7%. Well, we take a dollar to the same dividend one year from now, except now we're divided by 7% minus 2%. And once we calculate that all out, we get an intrinsic value of $20.40. So as you can see, if the required rate of return goes up, the intrinsic value of the stock would go down, all else being equal. So let's go ahead and select answer B. And of course, we are correct. To recap, here are the two learning points from this video. Number one, if you're asked to calculate the intrinsic value of a dividend paying stock, that's code word for use the dividend discount model. Number two, if you're asked what would happen if one variable were to change, simply make up some numbers, calculate the answer, change that one variable, recalculate the answer, and you'll see exactly what would happen. Thanks everybody, and since you stuck with me to the end of this video, it's time for me to get paid with some likes. If you're finding this content helpful, please let us know so we can keep the content coming. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you're enjoying a video, smash that like button.